Hello everyone, my name is Angelica Dominic and I am a trainer here at Pragmatic Works. If this is your first time visiting our YouTube channel, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to stay up to date on all of the videos that we post. Today I'm going to show you how to create relationships in Power BI as well as how to edit existing relationships using the new relationship pane that was just released with the October update of Power BI. Now, you may be thinking, wait a second, doesn't Power BI automatically detect those relationships for me? Yes, yes it does. Most of the time, you won't need to do anything in terms of creating a relationship. However, sometimes you will need to go in and create relationships or make changes to existing relationships that are already in place. So understanding how to create these relationships how these relationships work, and how we can modify relationships will be beneficial to you. Let's head over to the Power BI desktop now to get started. Now, before we jump into the uh, explanation of relationships, creating them and modifying them, let's go ahead and turn on that new relationship pane from our preview features. So I'm gonna select File, options and settings and options again to get our preview features open here. Now we'll scroll down, scroll down here from our global section and select preview features. And we can see here that I currently have the relationship pane turned on. Now, if you are just getting started, this is where you wanna to go to make sure you have this turned on. And this will require you to close down the Power BI desktop and restart it before you can begin using this feature. So once you have that selected, turn on and turned on, then select OK, and then we will get started. I'm gonna select Cancel here. Now, I'm going to use the AdventureWorks dataset from Microsoft. And in this dataset here, we have a table with some customer information. We have a date table here, a geography table, an internet sales table, a product table, and a sales territory table. Now let's say with our data set here, we needed to create a visual that was going to show our total sales for each date. We needed to analyze how our sales are on each date. So let's go ahead and select a table visual here now to take a look at this. So from the visualizations pane, let's hover over these icons here and find the table visual. I'm going to resize this here and center this in the middle of my report canvas here. Now let's go ahead and bring in our data. So from our date table, I want to bring in that date column here. So I'm going to select this box here to add this to our table visual. Now from the internet sales table here, we want to find our sales amount column. Let's go ahead, select this here and get this added to our table visual as well. Hmm, as we can see, there is an issue with our visual. So even though Power BI will automatically detect those relationships between tables in your data model, as you can see here, sometimes it cannot do this. Sometimes it has trouble creating those relationships and detecting those relationships. So we are going to have to go in and create that relationship on our own here. Now, what we're gonna do here is we are going to, from our fields pane here, we are gonna right click our internet sales table here, and then we are gonna select manage relationships here to get that uh, relationship editor window open. Now, when we open this window here, we'll first see all of the relationships that are currently in place between our tables. We see a list of the ones that are currently marked as active, and we can see that we have an inactive relationship here between our internet sales and our sales territory. Now, we know that Power BI will automatically try to detect for those relationships in place, so we can select this button here to see if it will uh, fix our issue for us. And we can see this is saying that there are no new relationships found. So we know that this is one of those scenarios where we need to go in and create that relationship ourselves. Let's go ahead and select close here. And we're gonna select this new button here to create a new relationship. 
Now here in this window, we can select the tables that we want to create this relationship between, as well as the columns that are related. So from this first box here, I'm going to hit the drop down arrow and select the date table. Then we'll see a preview of the columns available. Now from this second box here, let's go ahead and I'm going to select the internet sales table. Now as the data populates these two windows here, we need to take a look at our data and see which columns make sense to create that relationship between, which columns have similar content in their columns. As I look at this first column here, the date key, I can see that between my date key and my order date key that these two columns here have similar data. So I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard and while holding it down, I'm going to select the date key from my date table and then I'm going to hold it down, still hold that control key down and then select the order date key from the internet sales table. Now, as we do this here, we can see that Power BI is automatically detecting the cardinality as well as the cross filter direction. I'm gonna come back and talk about these as well as the active relationship here um, when we jump over to our model view. So let's just go ahead here now and select OK to get this relationship created and see if this fixes the issue on our visual. All right, now we see that relationship is appearing here in our relationships list. We can see it is set to active. Let's go ahead and hit close here and see if our table is now fixed. Now we can see we no longer see the same value on our visual. We can see we have a different value for the sales amount for each of these dates here, as opposed to before when we were just seeing the total sales for every single date within our table. Now the other thing we wanna make sure to do, of course, is change our sales amount here to a currency value. So we can do that by selecting sales amount from the fields pane, and that will pop open this column tools ribbon at the top. We'll go over here to our formatting section and where we see that dollar sign that will allow us to change the formatting and apply a currency to this. Let's go ahead and hit that drop down arrow there and select English United States for our currency. All right, so now we can see this visual is fixed. We can see we have our dates and we have the sum of the sales for each one of these dates and we can see a different value for each one. Let's go over to the model view here now to take a look at that relationship pane and how we can edit an existing relationship if we needed to. So here in the model view, we can see all of the tables that we have within this AdventureWorks data set, and we can see the relationship lines existing between our tables. Now, when you hover over a relationship line in the model view, it will show you the key columns that are connecting those two tables. Now, if you hover over a relationship line and you don't initially see the two columns or you're not seeing a column on one of those tables, you can just hit the collapse here at the bottom of the table. And then when you hover over your line, it is going to display those two columns one between our customer table as well as the one between the geography table that's connecting these two here. Now let's take a look at the relationship pane over here. So I'm going to select the relationship line between our date table and our internet sales table because that's the one that we just created. So I'm going to select that relationship line here and we will see in the relationship pane that we are now looking at our relationship between our internet sales and our date table, between that order date key and that date key column that we just created that relationship between. Now, here in this pane, we have the ability to change the cardinality here. Now, Power BI will automatically detect and set the cardinality type. And there are four cardinality types, as we see here, there are, there is a many to one, a one to one, a one to many, and a many to many. The many to one and the one to many 
are the two most common cardinality types and they are essentially the same. The one side means the column contains unique values and the many side means the column contains duplicate values. Now a one-to-one -one relationship means both columns contain unique values. And a many-to-many -many relationship means both columns can contain duplicate values. We're going to leave the many-to-one cardinality in place here because we know that this is the best option for what we have in place for our relationship here. We could also choose to change our relationship from active to inactive. Now we want to keep this as active here. Active allows, widens the scope of what you can do with your uh, tables and with your data in your data model. So we're going to leave this set as active. Here in the cross filter direction box, we can see that it is currently set to single. Now the cross filter direction decides which way the filter affects your data. The cross filter options are going to depend on your cardinality type. And a single cross filter direction means the relationship filters in a single direction, and, the, and both means the relationship filters in both directions. Uh, the both directions option is commonly described as a bi-directional uh, filter here, or bi-directional uh, relationship. Now, if we wanted to make any of these changes here, we need to make sure that we, once we make a change, we need to hit this apply changes option right here. Until we hit that, the changes we make here, the edits we make on our relationship plane will not take effect on our uh, relationships here until we select apply changes. So I'm gonna leave this set as single. There's nothing we wanna do here. And we have our visual now fixed the way we want it to in order for our data to show the total sales amount for each day within our data model. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me here in this video. I hope you find this video helpful as you begin creating relationships and modifying existing relationships in Power BI. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button below so that you can stay up to date uh, with all of us here at Pragmatic Works. If you want more content from Pragmatic Works outside of our YouTube channel on Power BI or any of the other programs in the Power Platform, such as Power BI, DAX, Power Apps, Power Automate, Azure, and Microsoft Teams, then head over to the link that I've listed here in the description to get to our on-demand learning platform. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.